Yeah, we did. We, well, we went sea kayaking up in Gulf Island, so just off the door. Yeah. And over to the San Juans. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for being here in City Hall. The September 10th, 2018 City Council meeting of the full City Council will come to order. It's 2 o'clock p.m. I'm Bruce Harrell, President of the Council. Will the clerk please call the roll? Sawant. Here. Bagshaw. Here. Gonzalez. Herbold. Here. Johnson. Here. Juarez. Here. Mosqueda. <laughs> President er, um, O'Brien. Here. <laughs> President Harrell. Here. Seven present. Thank you very much. There's no objection. Council members Gonzalez and Mosqueda will be excused from today's meeting. It uh, doesn't need a second. I just said there's no objection. So hearing no objection, as long as you didn't object, we're okay. Council members Gonzalez and Mosqueda are excused from today's meeting. Uh, at this point, I'll move to adopt the introduction and referral <coughs> calendar. I believe uh, Council Member Swanch, you may have uh, something to say about that. Thank you, President Harrell. I move to amend the proposed introduction and referral calendar by introducing appointments 1126 through 1128 and by referring them to the Human Services Equitable Development and Renters Rights Committee. The appointments are entitled Appointments of Lori Goff and Gev Devin Silvernail as members, Seattle's Renters Commission for a term to February 28, 2019, and appointment of Mercedes State. T. Tate Lamar as member, Seattle Renters Commission for a term to February 28, 2020. Is there a second? It's been moved and second that the introduction for a calendar be uh, amended as stated by Council Member Swan. Any further comments? All those in favor of the amendment, amendment say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. And I don't believe there are any other changes to the Introduction referral calendar. So, therefore, those in favor of adopting the introduction and referral calendar as a minute, please vote aye. 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 Opposed? Vote no. Uh, the motion carries, in, and the introduction and referral calendar is adopted as amended. If there's no objection, today's agenda will be adopted. If you no objection, today's agenda is adopted. The minutes of the September 4th, 2018 City Council meeting have been reviewed, and if there's no objection, the minutes will be signed. Hearing no objection, the minutes are being signed. Presentations, we have um, two presentations, and Councilmember Bagshaw, uh, we'd like you to give the presentation that we have scheduled for you. Yes, thank you so much. So I am delighted, colleagues and to members of our audience, to introduce you to the Sail Like a Girl team. And as I mentioned this morning, this is a matter of pride. This is not in any way a disparaging remark. And I want to say um, thank you and introduce Jean Gusev, Anna Stevens, Haley Lehman, Allison Valdzi, also known as Double Latte, um, Amy Fulwell, Kate uh, McKay, Kelly Danielson, and Morgana Buell. And the race to Alaska was something that they won this summer, and it is the first all-women team to win this race. As I understand it, as 750 miles, much of which is open water. And as I, many of my colleagues up here know that a decade ago, my husband and I sailed across the South Pacific from here uh, to Tahiti and through um, the Marquesas and Tuamotu. So I know what it's like to be out there when it's dark and when the waves are crashing behind you and you hear something cresting and you can't see it, um, but you did it all the way with no motors and one of the first teams ever to come through. And I know that you got a $10,000 prize nailed to a block of wood, and I understand you're giving this all away. Um, congratulations on that as well. And the second prize got, what, steak knives? So it's a big deal that you beat them. Um, and I just want to tell you how much I appreciate that and how much young women everywhere uh, can see and be inspired by the work you've done. And I love this story about you paddling all night and using your whatever bicycle efforts that you had done on the, the sailboat to be able to keep things moving and going. And um, I know it's tough. It's dark and you're confronting some big open water and many thanks and for all the good work that you have done. So uh, we have a proclamation here and we've got two copies of it signed by all of us and the mayor and I'd like to present it to you. And if it's all right with you, council president, I'd like to present it and give them an opportunity to speak for a few moments. Please do, the rules Thank are you. suspended. Thank you. Okay, 
the green lights are on. And thank you. I just assume not have you laugh at them. Please come on over. And who wants to? Anybody want to speak? Then. Good. Thank you. Thank you here, so we'll much. Be, you bet. You can look at the cameras here. Thank you. And also, I want to say thank you to Dan Strauss who helped us get this proclamation together. So. Um, now I'm going to give you one copy Thank here, and I'll you. share this other. And if you all want to say any followers, please do. You can use the microphone right here. Um, are you still doing photographs? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> We'd just like to say thank you for this recognition. Um, it has it was an incredible journey that we all ha had together out there in the ocean. Um, we hope that we can inspire other women to take that adventurous spirit somewhere, whether it's to the ocean or other places. Um, we hope that women will not be afraid of taking the lead on sailboats and will skip her. Um, <coughs> We hope that this, this message is inspiring in those ways and in others. So we're really grateful for uh, this acknowledgement and want to say thank you. Great. Well, I'm very proud of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much from the community and Councilmember Bagshaw. Our second presentation is actually uh, would have been made uh, by Councilmember Mosqueda, but unfortunately she's gotten sick, so I'm going to read some remarks that their office prepared and uh, the full council have sort of ratified. So it's my honor and privilege to present a proclamation uh, declaring September 10th to September 16th the Week of Mexico. And this is the second year the Mexican consulate has organized the MexAm Northwest Festival in commemoration of Mexico's Independence Day, and which is celebrated on September 16th. And this, this festival, which is really a lively event, includes uh, different events that take place throughout the city and the county showcasing uh, Mexico's art and music and films and food and discussions to celebrate and recognize uh, Mexico's culture and history. Uh, cultural festivals like this one have incredible power, we believe, to bring us all closer together with our neighbors to learn uh, and celebrate the vibrant, proud, and colorful uh, Mexican culture. So to, to understand and admire the work ethic and the craftsmanship and the resilience of the Mexican people, we do events like this, and indeed this is truly a special one. So this proclamation reaffirms the city of Seattle's commitment to being a, a welcoming place, a, a place where we value the contributions of all of our immigrant and refugee committees and recognizes the sister city relationship and partnership we have with uh, cities in, in Mexico, such as Mazatlan. Um, so I'll just read a few of the um, paragraphs. I won't read the entire um, proclamation. I, I sometimes do, but this one uh, contains a lot of, of uh, factual information as well. But let me share just some, some, some high points. Uh, whereas 20% of the total population of the city of Seattle is foreign born and the city of Seattle recognizes the value that is added to our community when we are a welcoming city. And whereas an estimated 6.5% of the total population residing in Seattle is from Hispanic or a Latinx origin, the majority of whom are Mexican or of Mexican heritage. And whereas the Hispanic and Latinx origin community represents a significant and fast growing demographic in the city of Seattle. And whereas Seattle's civic and political leaders have shown the conviction of protecting all uh, migrant communities and immigrant communities in Seattle and beyond, and including the Mexican community from unfair and unjust laws. And whereas the consulate of Mexico in Seattle, and we're fortunate to have him here right now, in Seattle relocated this year to an iconic Seattle building, relocated the building to uh, the Harvard exit, I think we all know in Capitol Hill, which will allow this Seattle landmark to start a new chapter in its history as the home of a culturally significant organization. And whereas this year, the Consulate of Mexico in Seattle inaugurated the Mexican Cultural Institute of Seattle. And whereas the Mexican Cultural Institute of Seattle is committed to enriching the relationship between Mexico and the United States by sharing Mexico's vibrant cultural past and present with our community. And this is the second year that the Consulate of Mexico in Seattle will celebrate the independence of Mexico with a bicultural festival that will be enjoyed by all members of the community throughout Seattle. And now, therefore, the mayor and the city council and the Seattle City Council do by here proclaim September 10th 
through September 16, 2018 to be La Semana de Mexico, the week of Mexico. And if there's no objection, we'd like to hear from uh, uh, Council Dondage here and share a few words with us. And we're welcomed, we welcome you here. Let me present this to you, sir. And I should have done this before, and I apologize. Did any of my colleagues want to say anything before I present this to our council? We good? Okay. And I was going to recite this in Spanish, but my Spanish <laughs> is just a little weak, so I didn't want to embarrass myself. Thank you very much, Council President. Thank you very much, Council Members. <clears throat> this is a very important um, a proclamation that you make because it's, uh, it, it talks about the friendship, it talks about the linkage between Mexico and Seattle, but also it talks about the importance of the Mexican-American community in Seattle. The Council has been at the forefront of making sure that people know that they're welcome, that uh, the city wants to work with those who make the city great. And we couldn't believe, we couldn't <coughs> think of a great, the greater, the great city of Seattle with also understanding the role that it, the part of its community which is of Mexican origin plays. Uh, we see it represented here in this council. We see it represented in judges, we see it represented in NGOs, we see it represented in the private sector, we see it represented everywhere. And it's also part of the linkage and the friendship between Mexico and the city itself. That's why we're also holding again, for a second year in a row, the Mexam Northwest Festival. This year we have 22 events, we're expecting 15,000 people to participate throughout the events. Last year it was around 8,000 people, so there, this is growing. Is coming about. We have a business delegation right here, right now, from Mexico visiting. I think we're just, again, starting to upload our relations to where it should be. And this decision, this proclamation is going to be shared throughout the festival events with the community so that they know that uh, the message that the council sends. I appreciate, I thank you very much. Muchísimas gracias por su apoyo. Muchas gracias por la proclamación. Thank you very much. Thank you, Council Dandish. Thank you for being here. You for good. Okay, so we'll uh, move on to our agenda, and at this point, we will take public comment on items that appear on today's agenda, the introductory referral calendar and the City Council's 2018 work program. The public comment will be accepted for 20 minutes, and speakers are limited two minutes of public comment, and if a speaker's comment exceeds the two minutes, the clerk will turn off the microphone. And we ask that you begin your comments by identifying yourself and the agenda item that you'd like to address. And I'll just call you out in the order with which you've signed. So we will start off with Marguerite Richard and then the Honorable Michael Fuller. Yes, good day, everyone. Um, I just speak because I speak. I don't have time to be speaking uh, where mere man wants to tell me what to do. It's beyond all that, okay? Because how can you heal in an environment that has made you sick? Huh? And this environment of people have made me sick. So Mr. I Shire, come would you here please I, speak to an agenda item or yeah, something? Yeah, that's the agenda Thank item you. about okay. how I come up in here and I'm disrespected just like Serena Williams was on the court, okay? So and I can't gonna, get loud gonna, enough for telling just you, you some notice. about what just has happened to me. I'm going to give okay? you some notice that I don't you find don't that relevant to the agenda. You listen to me outside the of the chamber, so you listen and to me so here. Did you talk not, about, you speak on did points, you talk about the Renters Commission? Did she say something about the Renters Commission? What about uh, Sherry Collar and her not being reappointed? And I'm sitting up in there listening to a black woman say that she was not even respected. And that's what, a volunteer commission? Huh? So you don't interrupt me. Did you learn that 
You should have learned that from grade school. You don't tell me what to do so in this fascist society. I still don't society. think you're speaking to an agenda no, item, so I'm going to ask you, she okay, be just removed like Serena Williams because you're on being the court. disruptive. You owe me to an, an apology item. as a black so please man have her and removed. a Japanese man. Okay. You owe me please an apology. And Every our last next, one of you. That'll be, Every last you are one being of you disruptive. owe me an apology. Did you hear what I said? Uh, I'm not going to come you hear down what I here said, that you must speak to an agenda item. Please have her removed for being disruptive. No, 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 I'm not. Uh-uh. Okay. Okay. Okay, that's fine. That's good. The rules will address that too. The, uh, if you're capable of listening, the rules only require that you speak to something we're working on. That's all. You're, you're, you're next, sir. You're next, sir. Uh, I simply ask that she speak to an agenda item or something on a work program, and I'm going to have ask you too, sir. Okay. So I'm still finding that you are being disruptive by not complying with the orders of the security guards at this point. Um, so I said that I'll explain it again. Uh, you don't want me to do that. Trust me on that one. But I'll tell you that I simply asked that. Uh, you, I just asked that you speak to an. Uh, I just asked that you speak to an agenda item. Okay. So, Mr. Uh, Honorable Fuller, you're, you're, you're next, sir. We ask that you speak to an agenda item or something on a work program or the insurance referral calendar. Please start the two minutes. A in parentheses, one in parentheses, A in parentheses, Title 8, USC, Chapter 7. <coughs> Title 8, U.S.C. 1325, Improper Entry Aliens. I commend uh, Jimmy Durkin for honoring my daddy who served this country two and a half decades. But it's a conflict because uh, the H.R. 3003, no sanctuary for criminal acts, and H.R. 3004, case law, and H.R. 309, enforcement of sanctuary city laws. Now that, that becomes a conflict, Bruce Earl. That's a conflict. And when it's a conflict, Bruce Earl, because I can't help it because I was in the coma for four months and it took me two years to learn how to eat, talk, and walk again. And I can't help it because I have brain damage, Bruce Earl. But I always remember what my two neurologists told me after I got out of the coma four months, Bruce Earl, not four days that people will try to take advantage of me because I have brain damage. But you know what, Bruce Earl, my guy got your address and your phone number, and I told you I'm very articulate in this law, state, federal, statutes, and RTW. Bruce Earl. Thank you, sir. Our next uh, speaker is Mr. Alex Zimmerman. Thank you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Mm. Uh, happy Rosh Hashanah to every anti-Semite what is I see in this city for another 5,000 years. And I see many anti-Semites in this city, more than enough. So we have a Mexico right now, eh, civilized country, probably. So I never see like this before to Israel. And we have like 7 percentage Jews. Mr. Zimmerman, what uh, agenda item are you speaking on or work program uh, issue that you're speaking on, sir? Oh, but it's not in So I'm, I'm, I'm notifying no. you that uh, okay. you must speak on either the introduction referral calendar, the our work uh, plan, or today's agenda, sir. I'm sorry. It's okay. No and problem. you've been uh, on I'm notice sorry. of that. Other than that, that would be disruptive if you're not going to do that, sir. Okay. Yeah, I want to speak about agenda number number three. About Very good or show oil in gas drilling. This is very interesting, guys. you talking about no drilling because you care about environment. I'm so sorry, guys. Traffic jumped double for the last five years, double. And this traffic have too many gas who will kill a thousand, a dozen thousand people. You not care about this. Drilling is very important for business. It's a job. It's a money, and many 50 percent people totally poor. So government need money. Business money, very important. So before you're talking about Ireland, 
environment. Talking about stopping traffic who double. People staying in traffic for 30 minutes is like two pack of cigarette you smoke. People will be dying. Are you care about this? No. Why? Because you are Nazi social democratic mafia. A fascist is exactly who you are. And for last 10 seconds, I can speak to you. I'm candidate for city number five district against where is this Nazi brown pig. Thank you very much. Goodness. Our next speaker will be Nita Chambers, followed by Megan Murphy. Hi, my name is Nita Chambers. I am speaking on behalf of the Ordinance 119343. I'm here on behalf of Jefferson Park Lawn Bowling Club membership and the current president, Gina Tolentino, whose work schedule didn't allow her to come today. We just wanted to express our thank you for last Wednesday's meeting of the Civic Development, Public Assets, and Native Communities Committee. It was a pleasure to see the presentation done by Terry Burns. And it's been a pleasure to work with Parks over the last two and a half years to uh, come to an understanding of what our mission is, what we've been doing for 76 years, and, uh, and our partnership with Parks and the, the future that we have with you. So we're looking forward to acceptance today of the ordinance and a future par partnership with Parks. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Megan Murphy is our next speaker, followed by Jeannie uh, is it Gusev? Uh, thanks for letting me talk. Um, I really appreciate you celebrating the Mexican um, consulate um, because there was someone, I think his name was Leon Fierro, he was protesting a, a beer company in Mexico because they were using way too much water and um, he ended up in prison. I think he's still in there and they had a protest in front of the Mexican consulate um, for him um, to get help. So it sounds like uh, politics is pretty difficult in Mexico um, as a fact. So um, by having the Mexican uh, celebration here, it's um, showing solidarity with Mexico, our neighbors. Um, I know where I'm from in Iowa, we have um, a lot of Mexican immigrants and it was like one of the coolest part of our uh, city. So, um, so I invite... Um, <laughs> I know you guys are Seattle City Council, but um, I was here last week and Peter Holmes wants to prosecute, like as a career move, the nine people that protested in front of ICE. So I would like to invite um, that those kind of people to go to take the 750 mile journey in the ocean um, and go to the festival because, um, and it might not even be that far once you get, uh, once you go to the festival, maybe it won't feel that far, but Right now, it seems like um, in order for us to um, shut the ICE detention center, um, we would have to travel um, 750 miles by canoe in the night. And that takes a lot of bravery. And it would um, actually be really scary. And I'd be terrified. Um, but <laughs> but I I'm reading about Kennedy. And he got um, his boat was chopped in half in the Pacific. And his, he had back problems. And he still stood up for civil rights, and if he could become president and stand up like that, then we should listen to protesters who want to shut it down, the ICE detention center, and have a good time at the Mexican uh, festival and see at the show box at six tomorrow, maybe. Thank you, Ms. Murphy. Uh, is Jeannie here? I don't believe she was here with the uh, Skate Like a Girl group. So, okay, so we'll uh, end that. So that'll end the public comment session. And we'll move to the payment of the bills section. Please read the title when you're able. Council Bill 119346, a property money to pay certain claim and ordering the payment thereof. It's been moved and seconded that the bill pass. I'm sorry. Uh, I moved to pass Council Bill 119346. Is there a second? It's been moved and seconded that the bill pass. Any further comments? Please call the roll on the pass of the bill. Swan? Aye. Bagshaw? Aye. Kerbold? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Juarez? Aye. O'Brien? Aye. President Harrell? Aye. Seven in favor, none opposed. The bill passed and the chair will sign it. Uh, please read the first agenda item. The report of the Civic Development, Public Assets, and Native Communities Committee. Agenda item one, Council Bill 119340, relating to the Seattle Park District authorizing Superintendent of Parks and Recreation to acquire real property and property rights within the city's green spaces. The committee recommends the bill pass. Councilmember Juarez. Thank you. 
Yes, this council bill authorizes a superintendent of parks and recreation to acquire real property and property rights within the green space area. Um, our committee, the Civic Development, Public Assets and Native Communities, voted unanimously to approve such actions. Very good, any further comments or questions on this council bill? If not, please call the roll on the passage of the bill. Sawant. Aye. Bagshaw. Aye. Herbold. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Juarez. Aye. O'Brien. Aye. President Harrell. Aye. Seven in favor, none opposed. Bill passed and chair will sign it. Please read the next agenda item. Agenda item two, Council Bill 119343, relating to the Department of Parks and Recreation, authorizing the superintendent to enter into a management agreement with the Jefferson Park Lawn Bowling Club for the purpose of renting rooms and teaching lawn bowling to the public at the Jefferson Park Lawn Bowling Facility. The committee recommends the bill pass. Councilmember Juarez. Thank you. This council bill authorizes the superintendent of Parks and Recreation to enter a management agreement with the Jefferson Park Lawn Bowling Club for the purpose of renting rooms and teaching lawn bowling to the public at the Jefferson Park Lawn Bowling Facility. The Civic Development, Public Assets, and Native Communities voted unanimously to support such action. And as I shared with you this morning, the Jefferson Park Lawn Bowling Club, along with Parks, did a phenomenal job in their public benefits section. We were really, really impressed, and we will now be using that as a template for how public benefits should be outlined for community assets. And I also want to thank the community and the representative here today. We had a full house at our committee on Wednesday, and we want to take uh, Thank you and appreciate the time you all took to come down to City Hall to provide public comment and let us know the history, the public benefits, and the use and what you've done for the community up on Beacon Hill. Thank you, And Kessler. with that, the committee passed it out of committee unanimously. Thank you, Kessler. Did I already Morris. say that? Thank you. Any further questions or comments? If not, please call the roll on the passage of the bill. Sawan? Aye. Bagshaw? Aye. Herbold? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Juarez? Aye. O'Brien? Aye. President Harrell? Aye. Seven in favor, none opposed. Bill passed and chair will sign it. Please read the next agenda item. The report of the sustainability and transportation. Agenda item three, resolution 31834, a resolution expressing the city of Seattle's opposition to offshore oil and gas drilling and exploration activities, included, including seismic, arrogant, and blasting. The committee recommends the resolution be adopted. Councilmember O'Brien. Thank you very much. Um, it's uh, unfortunate that we're in a world where we can't see West Seattle on smoky days in the summer because of forest fires and uh, the pristine coasts of Washington State, which has been off limits for oil and gas exploration for a long time, that we actually are having a discussion about um, is it a good thing or a bad thing to be doing offshore drilling off our coasts. Um, but the reality we face today is that the current uh, administration has signaled the um, opening up most of coastal waters on both the Atlantic and Pacific coast to potential offshore oil and gas exploration. And it's important for us to weigh in to state our opinion that we think that is a bad idea for a variety of reasons. Um, this resolution has two sections. The first states that the city of Seattle finds that offshore and gas drilling and exploration unnecessarily risks economic and ecological health and therefore opposes any plan or legislation that encourages oil and gas development and exploration offshore that would impact the residents of Washington State. The second section states that the mayor and city council firmly oppose offshore and gas drilling and exploration and call the governor of Washington, the state legislative delegation, the federal congressional delegation to, all, to take all steps possible to prohibit and prevent such actions. Further call upon the Trump administration, including the Federal Bureau of Ocean Energy Management, to halt such activity. We've seen um, a lot of voices standing up saying something similar. Uh, I believe we'd be about the 75th uh, jurisdiction in Washington State to pass uh, such a resolution. And we've seen, I've seen governors, um, both Democrat and Republican governors from Atlantic and Pacific uh, states stating strong opposition to this entire proposal, including um, including uh, the, op the possibility of offshore drilling in Washington. Um, so I would urge your support, and um, that's it. Thank you very much, Councilman Bryan, for bringing this to us. Any comments or questions or concerns on the resolution we're about to vote on? We're good. Those in favor of adopting the resolution, please vote aye. 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 Those opposed, vote no. The motion carries, the resolution is adopted, and the chair will sign it. That concludes our agenda. Is there any further business coming for the council? If not, we stand adjourned, and everyone have a great rest of the afternoon.